Lesson 13, Special Characters and Text Variables. A good designer cares about what a design looks like, if the correct message is being communicated to the correct audience, and that their files are prepared in such a way that they are prepped for production purposes and efficient for any future editing needs. Being a good designer means thinking about all aspects of a design from concept through completion and beyond. We've talked a lot about increasing design efficiency in this course. It has been an overarching theme. The more efficient we are as designers, the faster we can design. We also aim to work clean, meaning we create files that use the least number of frames and hidden characters possible. This helps eliminate any confusion when someone else is working with our files. In this lesson, we will add special characters to our efficiency repertoire. Special characters are characters that are not part of a traditional alphanumeric character set like symbols, markers, hyphens, and dashes. They are essential characters used often in text-heavy layouts that can be used to increase the efficiency of a design. There are two main ways to add special characters in InDesign. The glyphs panel found via the type menu is one option. Choose type and then glyphs to launch the glyphs panel. Double click any glyph while the text cursor is active and blinking to insert a glyph. Glyphs are tied to the typeface you are using. Some typefaces include many glyphs, some contain very few. Be careful. If you use a glyph and then change your typeface, the glyph may disappear from your design. In this lesson, we will focus on the second method. InDesign has an option to insert special characters via the type menu. Choose type, insert special character to see the options. InDesign provides options to add symbols, markers, hyphens, and dashes, quotation marks, and other types of special characters. Make sure your text cursor is active and blinking, and then choose the type menu. Choose type, insert, hidden character, and symbols to see what symbols can be added to an InDesign layout. Options include, as illustrated on screen, bullet character, copyright symbol, an ellipsis, paragraph symbol, registered trademark symbol, a section symbol, and a trademark symbol. Don't get symbols confused with hidden characters. The paragraph symbol that you can see on screen is a special character and it is a printing element. It is a way to create a visual representation for what we would describe as a hidden character. Markers are placeholders. They insert a variable that is replaced with a specific marker content as needed. A good example of a marker is the automation of page numbers. The current page number marker inserts the number of whatever page the marker is placed on. If the marker is added on page 1, it will display a 1. If it's added to page 38, it will display a 3 and an 8. Other markers available in InDesign are next page number, previous page number, section marker, and footnote number. When typing hyphens and dashes, you may need to enter different length strokes. There are keyboard shortcuts to enter M and N dashes and many other types of special characters. But a quick way to add these, especially if you don't use them very often, is to use the type menu. InDesign has options to add M and N dashes and discretionary and non-breaking hyphens. M and N dashes are fairly common. They are dashes that match the length of a letter M or a letter N, meaning an M dash will be longer than an N dash. Quotation marks can be formatted like a quote in a book or measurements like when you type inches. These different types of quotation marks are called many things, so you may have heard them referred to as something different than they will be called in InDesign. Double and single quotation marks in InDesign refer to the type of quotes used in a book. You may also hear them referred to as curly quotes or smart quotes or typographer's quotes. Straight double or straight single quotation marks refer to the quotes used on measurements, like when typing 16 inches 
or 35 feet. Technically, white space is not a special character. It is, well, it's white space. It is a special type of hidden character that allows users to further control the position of type within a layout. Choose type insert white space to see many forms of white space available in InDesign. M and N space are just like M and N dashes. They add white space, the width of the letter M or N between characters. Try experimenting with the other white space options, which include non-breaking space, hair space, sixth space, thin space, quarter space, third space, punctuation space, figure space, and flush space. I'll include links below the lesson within the supplemental resources portion of this page for those of you that are interested in learning more about each of the available white space options. Since we are in the same general area within the type menu, let's also take a minute to talk about break characters. Page, frame, and column breaks force text to stop displaying where it is and pick back up on the next page or the next frame or the next column. Using a break character is an efficient way to force text to start on the next page or in the next frame or at the top of the next column. Break characters are used in lieu of a bunch of unnecessary hidden characters, like hitting the return key over and over and over to space out your paragraphs. In the example on screen, the first example are two threaded text frames. The text is threaded from the first page on to the second page. There is no break character needed because the text flows continuously. In the second example, the same exact text frames are present, but now there's a break character added after the third paragraph, which is a frame break, so please ignore that my slide says it's a column break. There is a frame break added that forces the text to stop displaying on the left and immediately pop up into the next text frame that the text is threaded to. A text variable is similar to a marker, like the marker we use to insert automatic page numbering. The idea is that we want content to be displayed, but we don't want to type it in manually. Or better yet, we want it to automatically update if we edit the original content. A text variable will insert content, like words, into your document that varies depending on the context. Text variables are easier to see if we look at an example. In the example on screen, I would like to repeat the name of the book at the bottom of every left-hand page and the name of the specific short story on the bottom of every right-hand page. I could type these names out manually, but it would be more efficient to have InDesign automatically populate those text fields with the name of the book and or the name of the current short story. A text variable can be defined that will pull this information from elsewhere in the design and then repeat it at the bottom of the pages. Again, text variables are easier to understand when you can see them in action, so let's walk through this specific example together. This is just one type of text variable. It will be a running header text variable, but feel free to explore the many other options that are available to you in InDesign. Adding a text variable is minimally a two-step process. Step one, we are going to define our variable. And step two, we will insert our variable character. We can add two more steps, so we can check to make sure the right words have been populated into the fields. That's always a good idea. And we can then go back and format the text to have the desired look and feel that we need for our design. Let's walk through this example together in InDesign. In this example, I have created a short booklet that is a collection of short stories from the Gutenberg project. If I click through my layout, you will see that I have a front cover and an inside front cover, a title page, and then I start my short stories. Beyond the Bayou is a short story. The Selfish Giant is a short story a sale, so on and so forth, the looking glass. And as part of my layout, my intention 
is to create a footer on the page. And on the bottom of the right hand side pages, I would like it to say Beyond the Bayou or The Selfish Giant or whatever the name of the short story is. And on the left hand side, I would like it to have the title of the booklet. In this case, the title is A Collection of Short Stories. To achieve this, I can use a text variable. On a parent page, I am going to add content that I want to repeat on multiple pages. In this case, on the left hand side, I'm going to add a text frame that says a collection of short stories from the Gutenberg project. On the right hand side, I cannot type any one individual short story title because it's going to change. This is where text variables come into play. I can define a text variable using the type menu. Go to the type menu and choose text variables and define. When I set up my document, I set it up using paragraph styles. Because I did that, I can select the running header and I can edit the default running header text variable. And instead of using what is default, uh, basic paragraph as the style it is going to look for to populate that text frame, I am going to change it to be the story title. Then when I select OK, I can choose to insert the text variable where my text cursor is blinking. Now, if I go to any page with a parent applied to it, so page one does not have a parent applied, pages two and three do not have a parent applied, but page four and five do. On the right hand side, you can see that it says Beyond the Bayou because that's the name of the article for that page. It sees at the top Beyond the Bayou and it repeats it. And until it sees another instance of that paragraph style applied, every time it asks for that text variable, it will insert the words beyond the bio. And so if we keep looking down the document, you can see the left hand side will have the name of the booklet and the right hand side will have the name of the short story. And when we next see that style applied, where it's applied as the selfish giant. We can check that too. If we look at the paragraph styles panel, we can see that uh, the selfish giant has been applied. And then at the bottom of that page, it will start using the phrase, the selfish giant instead of the bayou. Let's take this one step further. Let's add automated page numbering. That's not a text variable, but it is a special character called a marker. Inside the text frame on either the left or right hand side of the page, I can have my text cursor blinking and choose type, insert special characters, markers, and current page number. Because I'm on the A parent page, it will have the letter A. But when I go to a specific page, it will change to the number. So I'm going to put A, I'm going to type page A, and I'm going to insert a hyphen. So we learned about um, special characters to insert hyphens and dashes. So maybe we want to have an end dash in between the page number and the title of the book. And then I can repeat that on the right hand side. So after the variable content for the running header, I'm going to hit the space bar, choose type, insert, special character, hyphens and end dash. Then I'll hit the space bar again and choose type, insert special character, markers and current page number. So now if I navigate to my book, I can see that all pages that are not associated with a parent, they don't have that information at the bottom. But as soon as I get to pages that are linked to a parent, I can see on the right hand side, I have the name of the short story and the page number, which just for consistency sake, let's type page and I have page five. Then when I go to page six, I have page six and the name of the booklet. On the right hand side, the name of the short story and the page number. And that is repeated over and over and over again throughout 
the layout. The biggest benefit for this is that now you only have to worry about one instance of the name of those short stories. If a sale was supposed to be a sale exclamation point, as soon as you update that instance, it will be reapplied in your text variable area.